Okay, if you have downloaded this product, the first thing that I'm going to recommend that you do is actually make a copy. So to do that, you're gonna go up to File, and you're gonna say, make a copy. And you can either leave it the way it is, or you can change the title on the end and make it Email Genie Backup, whatever you wanna do. But I would recommend making a copy in your Google Drive. The reason I say that is in case you are editing things in this particular product and you change something, or if you accidentally um, take something away from one of the formulas or you delete a cell and you can't put it back, um, anything of that nature, okay? That way you always have a uh, copy that has been unedited by you in any way. Uh, and that way you can always start from that copy from year to year. Uh, if you're going to use this from year to year. Uh, that way you can get it set up the way that you want to and if you make a mistake you can always come back to it. So the first thing we're going to do is once you've also downloaded it and you've made your copy is you want to make a co you, you may want to make an additional copy just for this year that's up to you uh, but you will go to wherever you have saved your student information uh, you want to make sure that you've got their last name in one column, their first name in one column, class period and instrument. That way you can just keep track of you know which class period you're looking at kids in and what instruments. Okay, if your names are not already in a spreadsheet in that format, I would recommend that. Uh, if you happen to be downloading information from your district's system, however it is, and it happens to put students into a um, a single column where it's last name comma first name like over here I will have something on the back end of this video to show you how to separate that with a formula as simple as that may be or if your system happens to do it in all capital letters I will show you how to fix that as well okay so the first thing you're gonna do is you are going to make sure that you've got your last and first name you are going to copy whatever your kids out of whatever class period you are looking at from wherever you have that stuff stored. You are going to go up to the very first cell and you are going to paste. I'm going to do a paste special in my case because I pulled them from a formula. Okay, And then you would do the same thing for your class period and your instrument. See that I have all of my names last name, first name, class period, and instrument. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in our emails into those two columns. I've already done that, okay? After you're done with that, you have a choice if you would like to hide those columns. All you need to do is select both columns after you've done all of your classes, and you would simply go to hide those columns if you want to. You definitely don't need to, because once you scroll over to the right, it will keep frozen columns of the other information. You don't need to look at the emails at that point, so you should be okay. I have uh, a roster based on 200 entries, so if you have more than 200 students in your program that you'll be using this for, you may want to divide it up and do some of your class periods in one spreadsheet and then make another copy of this database and then do your other class periods on another one but I have it based on 200 only because that's usually um, the average of students that I have, not counting my doubled kids who might be in jazz band as well. Pretend that I have all of my students in here. I don't right now. I just have what I have made up as a first period group of students, but we will pretend for the time being that, these, that I have all of my students into the spreadsheet at this point. So uh, if you ever have a kid that you need to delete, um, the easiest thing to do is let's say that uh, Charles Xavier has moved to another school, okay, or changed his class schedule. You'd wanna make sure that you are viewing the names, class period instrument, and emails, and just highlight those fields, and you would delete them. And then at that point, um, you could delete that entire field if you wanted to by clicking, right clicking over here and deleting that row. However, then you will be deleting some formulas that you could use for another student later on, depending on the size of your program. So you could just delete the information in the cell and leave a blank if you wanted to. 
The other thing you could do is you could highlight the names above that and you could copy them and then you could paste them in and then delete your other information underneath if you wanted to uh, keep everything without any spaces or breaks. At this point, you just want to decide which email app you would like to use on your machine. If you already have one of these set up as a default email app, then you are probably ready to go. Um, you do want to make sure that you have your professional signature uh, built in within your email app. Um, if you're using this on a tablet, I will have a brief uh, demonstration of that on a tablet as well. Uh, I happen to use this more commonly on an iPad, and so it just uses my Mac mail on my iPad. But if you have one of these built into your machine, you want to make sure it's a default app so that when you touch and tap on a hyperlink for a mail to, that will open up that application automatically, or if it's already open, it'll generate that email instantaneously. Okay. Um, so these will work both on PC and Mac. For me, when I'm on my Macintosh computer, it's also using my Mac Mail on the Macintosh computer, so there's no issue there. You literally are ready to go, and you can start using this right away. The only other catch is if you are satisfied with the wording of the emails that I have pre-prescribed for each particular category and subject. If you want to check that, the easiest thing to do is to click on each of the corresponding tabs and read through each of the email messages and make sure that you are satisfied with how they are worded. As I said in the overview video, please remember that messages are broken up into at least two cells because the formulas will automatically add the names within each email uh, pre-prescribed uh, message in between those cells. And so you would just need to coordinate your wording of a message to make sure that it accounts for that formula to insert that student's name into the email message. If you are satisfied with how all the emails are worded, then you are absolutely ready to go. If, if uh, you need to edit those, you'll want to take some time to read through each of the tabs and each of the messages and making sure that you are satisfied with those. The next thing you would want to do is just also think if there is any use for you to use the extra column provided if you want to add your own personal message within each of these categories and then you'll want to take the time to go through the composition of those as well. Once again if you're going to require spaces after a greeting or for paragraphs you will want to use this percentage OA that is listed there. If there's two of those, there are two spaces in between. If there's one of those, there's only one space in between. And then at that point, you are absolutely ready to go and start using the Email Genie. All right, so if you have your last and first name of students in the same column and you would like to separate those, I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's not that hard. The trickiest part is just getting it started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the column where the name is. We're gonna hit the little arrow button and we're gonna add two cells to the right. If you want to, you can title one of them for the last name and one of them for the first name. 
It really won't matter what order you do it in, but this is pretty typical. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the first empty cell next to that. And we're going to put this formula in the cell. We're going to hit the equals button. We're going to type left parentheses and then click on the cell that you want to pull from. And then a comma and a space. And then you're going to type search. And then you're going to put another parentheses. And then you're going to put a quotation, space, quotation, comma. And then for the cell, you're going to go back and click on the same cell that you want. And then you're going to put a back parentheses symbol, and a space, a minus, a space, the number two, and another back parentheses. And then I'm going to hit enter or return. And you're going to see that it has pulled the last name and then it's already suggested that you want to autofill that formula for the rest. So I'm going to click check and then it pulls all of them. So if you have 200 of those, it will do that formula for all 200 right away. However many names that you have there. So to pull the first name, we're going to go to the empty cell and we're going to put in this formula equals and then we're going to type right. We're going to put a parentheses and then we're going to click on the cell we're pulling that name from. Then a comma, space, and then we're going to type L-E-N. And then another parentheses. We're going to come back and click on that cell again. And then a back parentheses, space, minus, space. Then we're going to type the word search, and then another parentheses. We're going to do a quotation, space, quotation, comma, and then we're going to come back and click on that cell again. And then we're going to put two back parentheses back to back. Click enter or return, and then it has pulled the first name, and once again, it'll suggest that edit for the rest of your cells, no matter how many you have. Now we have all of our names separated by first and last. Now you might come into a situation where your data that you are grabbing from your school system might automatically capitalize your student names. My district happens to do this. So if you pull them into an Excel file or into a Google file, um, this is a very, very easy formula. All you're doing here is, and you will create another cell next to that name where you've got everything capitalized and the formula is super easy. You just hit equals and you write proper and then a parentheses and you click on that cell and then a back parentheses and hit enter and it has taken care of that. And then you can copy and paste that formula into any of those cells all the way down, and then you have it. Then if you wanna pull the first and last name, you can use the other formula uh, to pull the first and last name into two separate cells from there. Like what we did, okay, we used the formula to separate those you will still copy, but when you come over to your Bangini, all right, you are going to right click and you're going to say paste special and values only. Because if you don't do that and you just paste them normally, you will get a reference error. Okay, so because we're taking them from a formula, we're only pasting the values, otherwise it's gonna to try to paste the formula there.